seems uh, I've changed my name and face. Uh, so my name is Andres Berzins. I'm a managing partner of Change Ventures. Uh, we are a pan-Baltic uh, pre-seed and seed stage investment company, major capital firm. Um, and uh, you can hear my British accent. So I grew up in the UK, uh, spent some time in Latvia, a bunch of years in the US, um, and have been back here for quite a while um, doing investments here. Now let's see, we should have slides as well. Slides working, slides not working yet. All right, so while they're, while they're getting there, um, so uh, Change Ventures is a, um, as I said, a pre-seed, seed stage investment company, uh, venture capital firm. We have invested in nine companies across the, of the Baltic states. So uh, we have one investment in Lithuania as well, Interactio. Um, and uh, we're very excited about them and uh, the potential for more Lithuanian startups uh, who can go global. So. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, what we look for is teams with grit. So grit is passion and perseverance. So uh, people who, as I like to say, are ready to walk through walls in order to build businesses. Um, and we have some founders like that that we've backed. Um, here are some of the other companies. Um, and uh, what we invest is typically anywhere between 100 and 750K, depending on the stage of the business and the stage of the financing round. Um, and we help get to product market fit. Um, so most of our investments are not there yet and help connect to investors. So we have a long list of investors we know and we uh, make these int introductions and try and help find the next stage of, of funding rounds for, for these companies. So um, the topic of what I wanted to talk about was board meetings. So um, many of you might think I'm crazy uh, saying I love a good sort of board meeting. Um, because when was the last time you heard a founder say they're really excited to go to that board meeting? Right? Not so often. Not so often. Um, that's because most board meetings are really not that good. Most board meetings are not a successful and useful and productive way to spend time. Now, I've been in startups for about uh, 20 years. I've attended a lot of board meetings in startups. Some of them have been really pretty awful. Um, not productive from the investor's point of view, not productive from the startup point of view. So um, I wanted to give you a few quick thoughts on how to make that process productive. And to start with, um, what is a board? Why do you need a board? Right? So uh, you have investors, shareholders in a startup. Initially, those shareholders are just the founders. They may have external investors that come in. And so the shareholder base um, needs a representation of a bunch of people who are paying more attention than the shareholders, perhaps every quarter or a year, um, more attention to how the business is developing, where it's going, what are the big strategic decisions that that business needs to make. That is the role of a board. Um, and the management team reports to that board that manages the day-to-day -day business. Right? So that is what the board should be doing. The board should be helping the uh, the management team make those big decisions, you know, when to raise money, how much to raise, uh, when to enter new markets, which markets, at which time, uh, who are the right people to hire, uh, what's the hiring process, you know, all of the sort of the really big important decisions that uh, companies need to make. Um, and in some ways you should look at, founders should look at boards as something that should be helping them build a great business, right? That should be the role of a good board. So in terms of when to set up a board, um, so that at minimum, at some point, if you take external investment and you don't fund the company just bootstrapping, then so at some point, some investors will effectively force you to take a board. They'll say, we'll invest if you have a formal board set up. Um, but I think smart founders are setting up boards earlier. So um, they're doing that in order to um, sort of build the muscle so think about how to build good corporate governance, good management of the company in a structured way before that's required by external investors. So what I see is companies that don't set up boards until they're raising their Series A, um, they will, the Series A investor will come in and they'll look at that and they'll, and they'll understand that, that the management team has a learning curve now to go on how to work with a board, and that's something that that Series A investor will then need to take on. So if you've already done this before the Series A, if you've done this at the seed stage, you will have already built up that muscle of thinking about how to prepare for a quarterly or monthly or whatever it is board meeting, um, how, to, how to get investors working together in the board, how to resolve things, and so building up that muscle and that discipline is a good thing to do. 
Who should be on the board? So it depends on the stage of the company. So this is a slide I pinched from Mark Suster, both, uh, whose blog, Both Sides of the Table, has some really, really great um, stuff on boards recently. Um, so if you look at the seed stage, typically a, a board will have uh, a couple of founders and maybe one external investor. And here, as you can see, the, you know, the, founder controls, the founders control the board. And uh, the, and the, the A and B, so there's sort of a progression to, to uh, B in the middle. B is the point at what time in which you, a series B at which you might have some balance between founder or investor control, depending on what the dynamics are in the business. And when you're at much later stages, then you have much larger boards, more complex, um, investor dominated in some sense. Um, so it depends on, on the stage. Um, but I think the important stage for most people thinking about seed, at the seed stage, the founding team should, be, should still have control, as it were, of the board. The investors will typically have veto rights on some certain decisions, but on general board decisions, the founders will still be in control. So it's not that you're giving up control as soon as you have a, have a board set up. So who should be on the board? Um, you should recruit people to boards. So it's, it's, you wouldn't hire a CTO or a, CF, a CMO or something just uh, you know, with a single interview. You would talk to people they've worked with. It's the same with boards. So you should talk to uh, startup founders who have had this person on their boards. And the most important question is, what does this, pers what does this board member, how do they behave when the shit hits the fan, when things are bad, right? It's easy to be a great, very helpful, productive person when things are going well. It's much harder to do that when things are not going well. That's the key question to ask. Um, and I, I see this a lot. You know, it's really easy to find out which boards people are on. It's usually on their LinkedIn profile. Um, you just go and contact those founders before you hire these people to be on the boards. So how do external board members, so a board member who's not part of the management team, how do they feel? So they feel like this. They're standing at the station. The inner city train is like rushing into the station and they need to jump on board for a few hours, right? And have a very productive discussion and then they jump off again. So when you're a startup founder, you're in the business every day. You're solving these problems, you're living this business, right? You're ta probably taking it home, you're probably having dreams and nightmares about it. For the board members, it's different. They're dealing with multiple companies. If they're a venture capital fund like us, we have a bunch of portfolio companies. We deal with all of them. Um, and so we need to jump on this train and jump off again very productively. And sort of that's the metaphor you need to think about how you can make that process successful, right? And, and, and that time that you're on board the train, how to make that time productive. So the key to making it productive is preparation and setting the right expectations. And these are the two things that I see founders not do well, well enough. So preparation means sending out materials for the board members really two days ahead of the board meeting is, is, is the right time, you know, a day in advance at the very, at the very minimum. So you need to allow them time to digest all the update on what's happened with sales, with hiring, with whatever else has gone on in, in, in the business, get them up to speed so that when they're boarding the train, they're already moving at the same speed. You don't have to spend half an hour explaining that you've you know, won this customer in Japan or whatever it is, right? Um, so make sure that they have the information so that they are up to speed and you don't spend the board meeting just updating them on what's happened. Right? So what you want to do is, as much as possible, the board meeting should be a discussion of what are decisions that need to be made, what are the issues that the important strategic issues to be tackled, what are the options for what we should do, and that's the time that this set of brains that you have in the board should be, should be that's what they should be focused on. So getting them up to speed is the most important thing, and one of the key things I see can founders consistently not doing is sending the materials early enough. And I've been on the founder side as well. Obviously, you know, you think, well, there's another three hours, maybe I'll close this deal and then I can add it into the board presentation or, you know, I'll have a better update on something. So don't over-optimize, right? Better to get the materials out there and, and then maybe in the board meeting you add verbally or you know, update a slide to say, you know, X, Y, Z has happened since, since we sent out the materials. At the same time, you need to set the expectations that everyone will read those materials before they walk into the room, right? 
obviously you can't set that expectation if you send out the board materials two hours before the board meeting, right? But if you do it two days ahead of time, and when you start, when new members join the board or when you form the board, you have an open discussion about here's how we want the process to work. We'll send out the materials in time. You need to read them. And then when we start the board meeting, the only discussion about what's happened and update will be focused on what are your questions about the update we sent out, right? So I have a, a number of boards I'm on, and this is the structure we try to use, is uh, all the materials are sent out, and then the first discussion is just, you know, do you have any questions on the sales update? Right? Here's the, sales, the, the numbers, the, cus the customers, and maybe there will be a question that comes up, some, something to discuss. But you've set the expectation that everyone will have digested that, and they'll be able to actually come in the room and productively discuss uh, what are the questions that need to be addressed. And so someone needs to manage that agenda as well. So often there will be a board chairman whose job it is. In the initial stages, that might well be one of the founders. Um, I'm involved in some later stage boards around Series A and Seed, and uh, I'm a board chair on some of those as well. Sometimes an independent board member is a good board chair because they can uh, work with founders and other investors to uh, bridge, bridge viewpoints and manage a discussion. But it's important that board chair you know, takes on the responsibility to think about the board meeting ahead of time, think about what is the right agenda, what are the points we need to discuss. Um, as the company gets larger, you would do more and more pre-board preparation. You know, and by the time you've got your Series A investors on board, you should probably be doing, as a CEO or board chair or both, you should be doing a call with all the other board members before the board meeting to sort of sync up so everyone's on the same page. So then you can have an hour's discussion on should we enter the U.S. market, right? Or, you know, should we, you know, we're hiring, we're trying to hire people, you know, what is the right profile of people to hire in this key role that's going to be strategic for the business? Right? Those, that's the, the kind of topics you want to cover and the, and the stuff you want to talk about. And if you've got everything ready, then you'll be able to run through that agenda and do that. So that is, you know, really the, the number one thing which I see founders fail on. Um, and and we've, I've been there myself. So we've had board meetings where, you know, we have uh, probably two hours of discussion on what's happened in this market, that market, et cetera, et cetera. And then you end up with the last 20 minutes on some strategic issue that you should have spent two, 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 two hours on, right? Um, and that's always down to, almost always down to lack of preparation. It may be down to the people you have on the board as well. So if you select the right people, they'll manage to stick to the agenda and they'll be reasonable about not hijacking it. Um, and the board chairman's other role is to make sure that someone doesn't hijack the agenda. So if you have one board member that likes to, you know, look up the numbers and say, you know, the gross margin in your French business is, you know, off by 2%, right? It's like, might not be relevant. So then the chairman's role would be to say, look, take that discussion offline, outside the board meeting, let's focus on X, X, Y, and Z that's important. And then bombshells. So one of the other things that um, happens in board meetings is founders have bad news. Right? So there's always bad news in startups on a regular basis. No startup ever succeeded without having a series of board <laughs> meetings where all the, all the people in the, meetings are in, the, in the meeting are going, oh shit, like this doesn't look good. The question is, how do you deliver that news? So the first thing is, don't do it in the board meeting. Don't assemble everyone in a room and then tell them that sales have dropped by 30% this, this past month, right? Send, the, send that information in the update two days ahead of time. Expect the email shitstorm of people going, oh my God, oh my God. But gi it gives them time to digest, gives you time to perhaps have some one-on-one -on -one calls with some of the board members to give them the information and talk about what are the options. And then walk into the board meeting with solutions and options on what to do, right? And that will be a much more successful outcome. So I've been in board meetings where we've been, you know, one month away from not making payroll, you know, everything looks really bad, right? Those are difficult discussions to have, but they're much easier to have if you've actually 
prepped everyone for the fact that this will be a discussion to have, and you come with constructive solutions, ideas for what we can do about it, right? So, because there's, people are, when you're working with others, it's, a, it's working with people, so they have emotions too. So other board members, if they're surprised, think about the, the investor's uh, thought in their head, right? So they, they may have uh, pitched this company to their partners, convinced their partners that they should invest in this business, and now they're sitting in a board meeting where the sales are suddenly dropping, right? So the first emotional reaction some of them may have is, oh my God, what do I tell my partners, right? We, made a, we may have made a bad call. So let them digest this and then sit in the board meeting. They've already digested this and now they're thinking about, all right, so what can we do to actually like fix this? So that's, that's my advice on how to do that. So happy to take any questions. Anyone has particular questions about boards? Uh, I think we have a little more time. Three minutes left, if anyone has any questions there from the front. How often do board meetings? Very, very good question. So um, usually at uh, pre-seed or seed stage, so really early, I would generally say every month or every two months. Um, by the time you get to Series A, typically there'll be the formal board meeting will be every quarter and you might have uh, a board call every month, which would be, say, a one-hour update call, uh, which might be kind of optional for the board members. Um, but uh, the companies we work with, typically we're aiming at, at once every month or every two months. And of course, logistics may determine that to some extent as to how often you can meet. Uh, it's easier if you're in the same, the same town. Do we invite company advisors? Like, what, what do you mean, company advisors? So, so very, very good question about advisory boards. So, some companies have uh, formal advisory boards. They are usually technical or you know uh, uh, specialist advisors. Um, so, these will typically be separate from the board. The board should be a management of the company. Um, an advisory board you would have separate. So you may invite some of those invi advisors to the board meetings. Typically I see them, they're more, s usually it's founders picking their brains one-on-one -on -one as a separate, and the advisory board is usually a more of a marketing ploy to show investors and show customers that you have smart people who are supporting the business. So we have time for one more. Anyone has one more question? One more? No? All questions solved? Anyway, I'll be around here these two days. Anyone has further questions? Thank you.